ようこそどうぞはじめまして Hello, everyone. Welcome to the, the Glorio Chat, the best anime podcast on the internet. My concept of time in 2020 is still entirely out the window, so for some perspective, we are halfway through the current anime season already. What is time? What is、yep. space? Before you know it, we're going to be doing previews for next season and then the, all the. All the year end stuff that's coming up、How、very dare quickly you bring here. Things up to me Hell in, yeah, love it! In, in March of 2020. <laughs> yeah. Have you, have you guys got your number one anime of the year in mind yet at this、uh, point? I, I actually have to see how certain things end. I'm, I, I, got a, I got a tentative list. I, you know, it's. it's、uh, I mean, I, mean I, think it's fair, I think it's fair to say Akudama Drive is a contender this season.、Right? <laughs> For me, it who who, who could have. Sorry, go ahead, Zig. I, I was going to say, for me, it depends on whether they close the loop on the time travel in Gal and Dino. If they can do that, <laughs> then.、Mm. Oh, no, that's all. They burned the books. Man, that's, that's over on the time travel.、Uh, uh, well,、so. we'll see, shall we? Anyway,、uh, yes,、yeah, so midway through the season. So, you know, we'll be doing our checking in with our usual shows.、Uh, there's, I'm going to be looping back around to some of the other shows we haven't been talking about. So, we'll, we'll get、uh, Jell's Anime Trash Power Hour. We haven't had one of those in a while, I feel like. But、uh, before we do that, just to introduce everybody, I'm Jell, as I've already just said. And you've probably heard everybody, but we're joined by Iro. I'm still here. Not dead yet.、Uh, I made pie for Thanksgiving. Pie is good. Yes, Thanksgiving is,、uh, well, it will be. <laughs> and now, with, and, and nobody's coming, it's all for me. <laughs> that, is, that, is that good or bad? I don't know. I, well, more pie that's, is that's, always that, good. That's a double edged sword, believe me. <laughs> more, more pie yeah, is, is always good, though, I think. And、uh, we're, we're also joined by G. Speaking of, of, speaking of, y'all, if you're listening to this, you've probably already made up your mind, but hey, if you haven't, maybe stay at home this Thanksgiving. You know? Don't, uh. Yeah. Don't, don't board a flight, please. Don't rent a car. Don't. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that shit, y'all. <laughs> Come on. I, I stay home. I, watch some anime. We're, we're, we're recording this a little later than we usually do, but I'm still going to try to get this out before. Uh, Thanksgiving, which will be Wednesday. But、uh, yeah, please, please don't travel, folks.、Um, and finally, yes, we are joined this time by Zig. I don't even know what Thanksgiving is. So it, it's something we do in the colonies、uh, every year. Oh, okay.、Uh-huh. The little、yeah. people.、Huh? We celebrate,、uh-huh. we celebrate <laughs> uh, spreading disease to the indigenous population. No, that's <laughs> our job. <laughs> <Yeah> . So.、Um, <laughs> All right, so let's dive into、uh, the anime. Uh huh.、Um, and we could start with our usual <laughs> opener here <laughs> as we creep along finishing、as、Great Pretender. Continue to gnash our teeth about a show that has already finished. And...、Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And、uh, actually, by the time this goes out,、uh, I, think it's co- I think if I get it out tomorrow, it will be the, it, that's when it's supposed to be out on Netflix for the rest、Jesus、of it. So、we actually, right. did, we actually are falling behind Netflix、Damn. here. But, we got to、uh, pick up the pace. <laughs> We're talking about Great Pretender, by the way. Yes, so Great Pretender.、Uh, we've watched two more episodes since last time of 18 and 19. I've been busy, guys. I don't know what else to tell you, but、Same、maybe、here. we'll finish it by next、uh, episode.、Uh, well, don't get your. Don't I'm get not your making any don't, promises. Don't, don't,、no. don't run checks you can't cash. Yeah, so 18 and 19.、Uh, so when we left off, we, we were, I think, all a bit skeptical about what was going on, but at least there were some potentially interesting things I,、yeah. happening. I would say I've gone from skeptical to、uh, having nailed down what bother, bothers me about Great Pretender. <laughs>、uh. All right, well, so what, what is bothering you <laughs>、right. about g r e e t Pretender? So, broad level, because the first three arcs all had the same conclusion of everything was planned from the very beginning, even as we get into the climactic final arc, you cannot believe anything the show tells you because、right. 
the president has been set that in the end it will have all been planned. Therefore, no matter what twists and turns happen, like you, the right. cat's already out of the bag. Like right. there's nothing it's, to believe. Yeah, to kind of like mirror what Iro is saying. Like I think the issue is that it's hard to invest ourselves in any plot developments at this point because we do not know if they are honest or not. And like as someone who like enjoys heist fiction, yes, there is always a little bit of dishonesty in like right. the presentation of a heist, but that's a trick you can really only do like once, you know, maybe maybe a couple times at most. Like because And other- I think I was sorry going, Jay. Uh, I'll just finish it real quick. Like yeah. the reason why you can only do it once is because you need you need to convince people to invest themselves in the plot, right? You need to make sure your audience doesn't know which lie is the real, or you know which one is right. the, which plot development is the lie. But you when, do it once as like the warning shot. But when the reveal is that oh they're all lies, then you don't know what to believe in anymore. I mean, I'd also add to that to say that I think the best um, genre fiction and heist fiction in particular is aware of that and sort of goes one layer deeper. So, you know, they'll do the heist and then something will go wrong, but they plan for this to go wrong. But then something will really go wrong, if that makes yeah, sense. And, right. and kind of... like, so you have that escalation. I, of... right. I think Great Pretender is missing that last step. Again, and, I, um, I, 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 and I think an important part of heist fiction is you know, wanting to solve the puzzle of, well, they seem to be in an impossible position. How do they get out of it? And I think Great Pretender did that very well in its first arc. I don't think the subsequent arcs have really... They've kind of cheated, if that makes sense. Yeah, I I agree with you there, Zig. And I think the problem is that, like, in a lot of ways, the first arc is good because it was the first exposure to it. The thing that's like that I think continues to, like, dog us with this show is they use the same solution that they used in the first arc and every subsequent arc of, ah, Lort planned for it all along. And, yeah, it just right. it just doesn't work anymore. Like, in a weird way, it actually reminds me a little bit of, like, the reason why I think a lot of people, I mean, other than, like, the bad writing in the later seasons, but I think a lot of people fell off of Game of Thrones, is that, oh, if you just keep killing people off, then people will eventually be trained to not invest in any of the characters. You know, they will be right. trained to not invest themselves in the plot because why bother if, like, characters will just be killed for, you know, gratuitous violence. And it kind of feels that way with Great Pretender of, like... So here's the thing, right? Like, we haven't even talked about the episodes themselves, but, like, 18 and 19 introduce, like, on its surface, really heavy stuff, right? Like, yeah. mm-hmm. characters are quote-unquote, you know, killed, you know? You know, Makoto is, like... Forced Mind to do so. Yeah, you know, like... he is broken. He is he 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 accepts the performance of some very like morally reprehensible acts. But like again, it's like how much of this is like the play, right? Like how much of this is the plot? And right, which the answer is going to be all of it. We know, right? Like, and, even even and, not watching ahead or anything. But, and, but then, and just yeah. sort of to um, you know, to to kind of defend Great Pretender here as well. This isn't a problem unique to the show. Like an awful lot of heist slash, you know, oh yeah, totally. Like, yeah. like thief fiction has I this mean, problem, uh, which is how do you convincingly escalate without losing the sort of breezy atmosphere, right. which is so essential yeah. to the fun of the genre. And 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 so here's the thing that like really began to stick out to me is like this show is not like. In a weird ways, despite the characters being more, like, traditionally heroic, the show's tone is a fair bit darker than, say, a Lupin the Third. Generally, of course, you have your, you know, Lupin has has totally shifted many times, but what I mean is that, like, generally... Great I mean, has Pretender, Lupin ever done human trafficking? I mean... <laughs> right, so, like, that's the thing, right? Like, Great Pretender generally, like, demands to be taken a bit more seriously. But because of that, the thing that actually really began to bother me about this arc is... I need to believe that Makoto and what he's done in the last two episodes, that he is in on it. Because yes. if he isn't, Laurent and his crew have done something unbelievably cruel to him. Like, this, this veers, this like, veers into, like, emotional torture territory. Like, right. they have, like, if, if Makoto's not in on it, 
then currently he believes that he killed his dad, he killed his friends, and that he is now, like, abetting human trafficking. Like, and right. probably, like, a ton There's... of other worse crimes. And if, if that, <laughs> if he is doing that, if he does not know that this is all part of the long con, and that Lauren is just like, <laughs> wouldn't it be fun if we convinced Makoto that he was a human trafficker for a few months? Like, that is super dark. Like, that's something right. that, like... Totally messed up. That's, ex- like... Even if, like, even if at the end of the day it reveals, ah, don't worry, all the kids you sold, we, we found them good families, and don't worry, nobody you shot actually died, he still believed that he did all of those things for, like, half a year of his life. And so, like, it's, it's, it's really messed up. It's, like, really, <laughs> really dark if you really think about it, and it's, like... Say what you will about Lupin. Yeah, Lupin's killed a couple motherfuckers, sure. But, like, even Lupin would never do something this, like, mean-spirited to, to like, a, a a generally decent person. And I mean, I, I would I say for know, the vast it's... majority of his published and screen history, Lupin has had certain lines that he will not cross, you know. And, right, like, uh, Lupin, Lupin will happily fuck over a dude, like, yeah. an evil dude, but, like... I yeah. mean, he, he will kill people if he has to, but he tends yeah. to try and avoid it. It's bad for business. And so, like... Yeah, so... I, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that was a big pivotal thing mm-hmm. for me, is, like... I, I the, First of all, I, I could not even believe that Makoto would flip to the point of like, running the auction for selling children, like, right. and without some kind of whether whether he was in on it all along or he's decided to take matters into his own hands and try to con his way out of it on his own. I can't imagine that he's actually just that broken that he's right, but... doing that. But I guess my, my point is, gee, you say, you know, all of that sounds way too dark for the show, which I agree. On the flip side, if he if it was just the plan all along, it goes back to the problem Iroh was saying. Right, of, so like... <laughs> I was like, none of this I, means anything. If anyone listening to this is like, man, it sounds like you guys are being really hypocritical about what you want this show to do, but, like, I think it's, <laughs> it's that neither of these options are necessarily the right. right one, and, like, it's the show's fault for cornering itself like this in the first right. place. I would, like, I would like to bring up Lupin the Third yet again in that, uh, in at least in Part 5, which we all enjoyed quite a lot last year, Lupin... We know, we know Lupin is going to win in the end every time because he is Lupin the Third. However, the twists and turns are real. Like, he actually messes up and gets shot and screws up and everything. It's how he bounces back from the failures that makes right, it interesting. Like, he does right. not always have it planned from the beginning. Yeah, like half the it, times it, it, Lupin <laughs> gets shot, he's not faking it. He is actually getting shot. So. Right. And, and again, it's difficult because the whole point of the heist genre is that it is all planned from the beginning, if that makes sense. Yeah. And right. so it's difficult to build a narrative where you know part of the fun is going along with the plan and part of the fun is dealing with the unexpected parts but it you know it just kind of feels that great pretender has has decided to get more serious than it needs to be and you know i'll always applaud narrative ambition and trying to you know give your characters realistic human motivations but i i don't think i'm being super controversial when i say like the drama bits of uh, Great Pretender have not been the strongest parts. I mean, I thought the, I thought the Abbey I, stuff and and the pilot who was like an ex soldier. I thought that was pretty cat handed, to be honest. Yeah, and, that was um, not a, that or was the, pretty or the uh, Cynthia's uh, romantic. Uh, I thought that was a bit better novel, because it's uh, better, but it's it's a bit lighter. Yeah, but I, I you think know, again, like yeah, I, the only the only one of these that has ever actually worked for me is Makoto's like two minute backstory in like episode two. Like I think that was right. so effective, and now I'm realizing that like. That is also an issue that that is sticking with with me is that I praised that backstory segment so much back then because it was so brief, but it told you everything you needed to know about the foundational events that like define Makoto and, as a character. And now they're like lingering it. They're like right now they're picking it. apart every detail and, of it. And, uh, like actually, his dad was also a con man apparently. Right. Like, and, so that's the thing that's actually really bothering me about this is the flashback in episode nineteen. It's it's like. Oh God, no! So what you're trying to do is like ah, it's all cyclical, right? Like ah, no, oh no, Makoto is becoming the mirror of his father and going down the same path, and it's like 
oh god, is this whole con just actually meant to be, like, Lauren trying to, like, you know, warn Makoto of the dangers of being a con man in his own convoluted way, and it's like, that's that would be just so... I mean, that that would oh, be that the would worst be so possible trite. outcome. Like, uh, if yeah, at the end I, I... they spin the wheel of morality, and it says, <laughs> uh, you know, we're not copies of our father after all, <laughs> and, you know, but yeah. it, it would well, be so, I, I don't, so trite. I don't think... I don't think it's going that. I think it's. Oh, more I don't know, a... dude. It's just like the, the the parallels they're clearly trying to set up, right? Like the con that they are performing in the flashback is like identical to the con they're doing now, right? Like that's the whole. I think point. it's more of uh, making Makoto accept who he is, but um, the yeah, I don't know. It at this point, I think it just is what it is, and we're going to have to live with it. <laughs> but yeah. To be clear, I, don't, I, don't... I still think this is like a broadly good show. Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, well yeah, I mean, produced. there were, I think there were probably, I mean, there were maybe some positives. I mean, I, I, I kind of like the Laurent flashback, if only because that's the only time we've ever seen him be vulnerable. But, yeah, uh... I, I guess I, I feel weird about the Laurent flashback because like, I think it came too late in the story yeah. for me to care yeah. about Laurent. Like I, I, I already did not like Laurent. Like, you know, by the mid, the midpoint of this show. But also, I don't know where else you would put this flashback. Like, it would feel right. like weird in the middle. But I mean, at, at this also... point, they they've established Laurent as so distant from the actual action that he kind of feels more like a like a comedy HQ figure, you know, like the dude from Charlie's Angels or something like that, you know. But <laughs> sure. but you get what I mean, right? Like, he's so much a part of the furniture that it's kind of difficult to make him into a real, tangible right. character at this point. Like, I mean, right. yeah, like, say what you will about, like, how they handled Abby's arc or, or Cynthia's, but, like, because they are more active in the, in the day-to-day plot, like... I am more invested in them than Lauren, right? Even if like right. their backstories were maybe not handled as well as like, or, or get it, get the same amount of love as Lauren's backstory, like they're also just they're more... inherently more likable characters, right? Yes, that definitely plays a big part as well. But it's like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's it's well, I still think they could do have it. To... You know, I, right. I, 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 I don't. That's, that's the thing, right? None of us have finished. I don't the show have any. Or... I don't have any faith that they're gonna make this turn this into something that's gonna be what we want. At this I, point. Right. My best. My best hope at this point is just like, hey, hey, we uh, we got them again, guys. Yeah, Woo! yeah. I think if we can just get like a fun outro of, you know, everybody coming back together one last time for some crazy, you know, which I I think that's what when we were talking with Artemis. Of, last time who has seen it all she was kind of alluding to that happening at some point so right. like if they can just kind of make it give us a fun exit out of this I'll, I'll it'll be fine but i don't think it's 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 way too late for them to make the show exactly the way we want it at this point but um yeah We'll have to we'll have to see. I mean, that's a <laughs> that's uh, a lot that's a lot of talk for two episodes, I guess. Yeah. We'll have to, uh, <laughs> well, you know, we'll, we'll have to uh, see what happens with the rest of it. So, all right, let's move along uh, to our other artificially extended uh, <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. show here. Gallant Dino is back. Hooray. It was an extremely and, strong return episode. Yeah, I don't know if it was just like my mood now compared to my mood back when it went on hiatus, but uh, or the fact that they didn't have some guy dancing around in his underwear for twenty minutes, or any of the other weird things they were doing uh-huh. uh, pre-break. But I did really enjoy this comeback episode. I think it kind of highlighted all of the things you like in Gal you might like in Gal and Dino. Um I, I think it was a solid to good episode right up until the egg thief and then it sort of spiraled out of control in the best <laughs> possible way. Yeah, so yeah, so I mean the no surprise on the, the the animated bits, although I will say I feel like the animation was very good for this show I, I, they probably i'm guessing they probably had a lot of, more time to work on this i one. mean i i don't think uh, it's the animation which has held them up put it that way <laughs> no yeah but but i feel like in this episode coming back like there were some like really actually well animated sequences and i, I mean i'm gonna guess because the delay was mostly for the live action part 
is what I'm guessing, and so the, maybe the animation team had a little more time to sit around and make things look nice. But uh, I'll just throw that out there. But otherwise, I mean, that kind of was par for the course, which I, I've always said before, I really li- actually like the anime bits. They're very kind of charming, I guess. I enjoyed but, uh, the uh, the school Bolero segment, which was kind of a fusion of live action and animation, which was um, weird and fun and a little something different. That probably went on a little too long, <laughs> but uh, yes, all those little weird uh, in-between things. But um, the the live-action part, it was like, uh, the, the, the whole episode is basically birthday party for Dino. Um, the live-action part had possibly the worst acting I've ever seen in my, in, I mean, I don't watch Toku, so you guys have probably seen worse, but, uh, no, this like was much worse. I feel like the, the, the acting is intentionally poor. Yeah, yeah but right, yes. Like, that's... I, like, they, they, I don't think they were putting on any, um, I don't think they were trying to fool us on that one. I think they were embracing, like, I don't know who the, the other two, because, like, two of our friends show up. I don't know if they're, I don't know if they're famous or Whatever, something. Whatever, they're idols, know who they were. But yeah, so but they were some of the some of the worst acting I've ever seen, and they kind of just like embrace it, and it's it's pretty great. And then the egg thief guy shows up. <laughs> it's uh, it's a moment, all right. <laughs> so um, big a big bonus points for getting the music just on the recognizable side of copyright skirting. Um, I think that was very important. <laughs> yes. Um, so. You know, it was, it, it, I mean, the show is, you know, dumb, fun, kind of, you know, at, at its best. So they mission accomplished on this episode. And, uh, you know, we're only going to get a couple episodes at this point anyway. So, you know, hopefully they can keep up the, the pace with that. But it was fun. And and I'm sorry, Zig, the, the time travel is not coming back. Uh, I have faith. I have faith. <laughs> he burned. He burned the book. It's not going to happen. But anyway, let's move along. Look, he burned um, Shota Aoi's book, but the other book is still out there. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> if the White could, Chronicle and the Black Chronicle. Yeah, if he can just get hold of the book and then go back in time, and then you know maybe he'll have an. Let's, let's move Radiant along. <laughs> Radiant Historia Three. Uh, all right. Uh, let's talk about Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You guys yeah. said they had Shonen the. Uh... They, yes. They sort of had the. Uh, they got to the obligatory, like bit uh, towards the beginning of every shonen battle show where they start to introduce the secondary casts, who are all like a lot more fun than the main. Way cast. more fun and way more interesting than the main <laughs> cast. Like just it's every goddamn time. Like they introduce so like. They introduced right. the rivals from like the from what from Kan or Kanto Kansai shit I don't remember where but Kyoto. like Kyoto right you know the Kyoto k- kids right and like you know one of them just like a big buff dude with a scar on his face and like you know he the first thing he does is like ask the character like what's your taste in women like I can tell a lot from like <laughs> what kind of woman you like. By he the way, this, I my, mean he does this after taking his shirt off and flexing. Right, right, and like, you know, he's like, "By the way, my kind of woman is a tall woman with a big ass. What's your type?" And the character <laughs> yeah. answers like, "You know, I've never really cared about looks as long as the personality is good." And the guy's like, "My God, that is the most basic answer I've ever heard in my life. You are I'm truly su- <laughs> I'm a su- weakling." <laughs> And then the other character, you know, like, broody, you know, evil girl, well, not evil, but, like, dark girl, is his partner, and her power is just gun. Her power is just she whips out a pistol. <laughs> okay. Oh, I didn't, like, realize oh whole, right. I didn't realize whole horse was in this show. <laughs> and I was like, all right, like, fuck it, these guys are already way, way better than the main cast, but, uh... Also, then, like, the, pri- the prior right, episode yeah. was, like, the obligatory, like, you know, show, All Might Goes All the Out, the or, you know, Kakashi reveals the Sharingan, like, yeah, right. like, the, the teacher character goes all, you know, doesn't even doesn't even go all out. He uses a, uh, you know, like, 10% of his power, but utterly, like, destroys the villain of the week, and, uh, 
It's mm-hmm. very well animated. Sung Ho Park is doing his Sung Ho Park bullshit of, you know, really flashy effects, really good fighting. Um, budget just turned all the way up. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's, there's, there really isn't yeah, much more to know, say about that show. It is what but, it uh, is. Yeah. But. Every, they're training in the main character. Everybody's training for the tournament arc. The, the oh, of course. Exam. Yeah. It's about time. It's about time for that, right? Of course. <laughs> We're running enough episodes in. I feel like they just get earlier and earlier. <laughs> right. I know. Right. Like I feel like Naruto. Like you know, the tuning exams took like you know, like a, a few bit. volumes to get started up. Nowadays, Shonen are just like, fuck that shit. We're doing it now. <laughs> Yeah, I think we've had that conversation many times now. But yeah, I, yeah I Dragon feel like Ball the, took those, quite a while before they got the, to those. Uh, those Kibu days Kai. of, uh, I think those days are gone now. With, uh... <laughs> we've cracked the code. It took a while. <laughs> it yes. took Dragon Ball Yu Hakusho for everybody to realize tournaments are fun. Yes. So yeah. let's just get to them fast. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it sounds like I mean. You guys don't usually keep up with these types of shows, I mean, we've right? Been watching so I mean, My Hero Academia. Yeah. I mean, but I, I mean, that's you got you have connection to the manga on that one, though, right? Sure. But um, I mean, it seems to be it's it's enough to keep you guys watching, right? I mean, yeah, I guess, it's uh... it's it's well made, it's likable enough. Like it's it hasn't uh-huh. you know it still hasn't like hit that point of like ah I see what this is doing that's so special. But you know it's right. it's a good it's a solid one of those so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's catch up with Moriarty the Patriots, which I didn't even know you guys were still watching and kind of forgot it existed. Uh, I think I, I, will I, might. Say, I will say about Moriarty the Patriot, uh, they they recently had subtitles to the opening, and the lyrics of that opening are comical. All right, well, hit, hit, hit us with it. Hit what us what up, have they yeah. got? It's it's all like <sighs> it's about what you'd expect. <laughs> no, I don't know what to, I, I don't know what you're saying when you say it's about what you'd expect. Yeah, I don't know. Like, what the, I have yeah, zero expectations. How do I, how do I, have lots more. of extremely heavily coded angst that definitely. All is right, not. I have I, I have pulled up the episode in mute. Uh, let's see. The mist is hiding the sin. I hold in okay. my hand the list of judgment. Okay. <laughs> Send a thief to catch another thief. Okay. Guys okay. of the privileged class torment the weak. Uh, all right. All right. And they enjoy it. <laughs> It's a bloody world, an endlessly discriminatory society. That's wow, a, they're not. That's a uh, lie. Happiness does not bloom here. We must do something. Going, they're not going for any metaphors or anything. No, I mean, yeah. like after wow. after All right. now we're a few episodes in. Subtlety definitely not this show's strong point. So right. I heard. So, they so what is uh, we haven't talked about it in so long? What has actually happened? Yeah. Like, did did Hot Sherlock Holmes show so up? Yeah, he I has heard that Sherlock Holmes. Take this one. He has just shown up. Yes, uh, he is yeah. on a cruise together with Mario. And is he is he the bad guy now? No, not really. Like, have they have the suburbs called him Herlock Sholmes to skirt the the, the <laughs> oh Japan doesn't give a shit. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, the Doyle estate. <laughs> also, Herlock Sholmes is going to show up later, and it's going to be a three way battle. But. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, I, I think, you know, I've been kind of disappointed for the last few episodes, and that's because they've... And and I want to stress, I don't think the show is bad. I'm still finding some fun in watching it, you know, and for me, at least, I appreciate the kind of chance to see a weird anime version of Victorian London, which is very relevant to my interests. But, um, sure. you know, that they've backed off on some of the more, you know, horror-slash-heavy violence things and it has become a very very unsubtle class warfare story Mm. you know and like put it this way the guy in the latest like the the guy who they are trying to take down in the latest episode literally hunts the poor for sport and, oh hell yeah! But it's that's great. But the problem is, it's not presented in an over the top enough uh, way. Oh no! You know, it's... Okay, because I was gonna say, fuck it, like you know, fu- fuck, fuck metaphors and fuck <laughs> subtext. Just show the rich hunting the poor for sport. Just really, just put them on blast. But yeah, it's and... not like doing it with the right like amount of bombasticness. I, then... I think you know, like there's definitely some. You know, the dude is definitely like a pure heel, and there's lots of like you know, moustache twirling bad guyness. But it's just not quite enough 
if that makes oh, sense. You know, true. they just stop one step short of it being, you know, JoJo slash Helsing levels of monologuing <laughs> at the screen right, while sure, sure. the world burns behind you, you know. And it can't really des- decide whether it, like, wants to be, A, a serious treatise on Class War, B, like, a super goofy treatise on, gra- on Class <laughs> War, or C, just kind of a slasher show. And the, mm. the net result is it's kind of nothing at the moment you know i mean i i think i they they need to find a sense of identity and um i my hope is that bringing homes in will will help that and i think his first scene with moriarty is actually fairly good because they have him do the whole oh i can tell what your job is by the way that you walk and the things that you look and you know it's so, a very classic Holmesy thing, yeah. but they write it well, and there's kind of a good banter going. Yeah, I, I was just curious because, like, in a show where Moriarty is the the protagonist, like, what is Sherlock Holmes's role as an antagonist? Is he like, does he represent the status quo? Is he like just a wild card? Like, what is I mean, kind of the answer is we what do you honest- think the vibe they're going for. The answer is we honestly don't know yet because he's only been on okay. screen for about five or six minutes. So far, sure. they very much seem to be setting him up as kind of like the intellectual equivalent to Moriarty, if that makes sense. You know, mm. they you know, they're they're portraying I mean, look, it's it's a I mean that was always the point of their relationship, right? Is their foil Yeah, I mean right, I guess what I mean is like I, 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 this is not the show where suddenly Sherlock Holmes is going to be defending the aristocrat who hunts the poor for sport, right? Well, like we don't it's... know. We don't know, you know. I mean I think it's fair to say that they're definitely portraying Sher- Sherlock as more of a tweener than like an out and out opponent of Moriarty. Mm. Like look, this is an Ikemen show, everybody's extremely <laughs> yeah. handsome and flashy, <laughs> I-, I will you say know, but... I-, I saw I saw screenshots of Sherlock Holmes and I I don't Eero, as someone who watched <laughs> this show and the show I'm about to bring up, I could not help but notice like, huh, hot blonde Moriarty like dark blue haired Sherlock Holmes, like are these just like D and T Young and Reinhardt? Like <laughs> you know, just, I I mean so the, the, the character designer for D and T is doing Moriarty. So. Wait, seriously? Yes, yeah. really. <laughs> oh, that explains so much of it. I was like when I saw that screen cap, I was like, D and T and I was like, Oh wait, no, that's not that that isn't Young. <laughs> like I, I mean I think Christ. that I think that the very little we've seen of Sherlock has been fairly encouraging because they definitely don't try and go with like the more common modern interpretation of him as you know a squeaky clean super genius um you know he comes off as kind of a prick which is true to the historical character they mention he's addicted to opium which is also something that was true of the historical character I mean yeah um and I think a lot of how I feel about this show will depend on how they develop that relationship going forward, you know, because for the past few sure. episodes, it's it's been very strictly, you know, monster of the week fair, except the monster is, here's a rich dude who, like, murdered somebody or swindled yeah. someone or stuff like that, you know, and that hasn't mm. been very inspiring. But I think if they can, you know, if they can build on the Sherlock versus Moriarty thing, I think they might have something there, but it it needs to cool it a little bit because it is so unsubtle that it's kind of hard to take seriously. (laughs) Plus, like, Moriarty's big idea of class warfare is to punish individual aristocrats who do bad things? Oh, rather so rather great. than like go for the bad apples, but the system is fine. I mean, <laughs> but, but like, I, but they keep saying that the system is not fine. So, I mean, I'm sympathetic because it's very hard to like make an interesting right, show yes. about petitioning for labor reform, right, for society, example. Societal change, you yeah. know, and you know, this is definitely, you know, e- even at the beginning when I was perhaps a little bit higher on it, this is definitely, you know, a very broad, you know, pulpy gothic thriller you know lots of blood lots Mm -hmm. of unsubtle character archetypes you know but i think i think i was right i think we do need some sort of like bigger agenda you know because at the moment it just kind of feels like the early episodes of toku where they're just (laughs) coming up against you know the pizza monster uh and like showing off to kill the poor yeah and wants to hunt the poor for sport (laughs) yes you know and um and 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 it definitely feels like because this is, you know, an Ikemen thing, like, they can't quite get as over the top as they want because, you know, like, part of the beauty of something like JoJo is 
everybody becomes like insanely grotesque at some point and you know i th- i think that's a they don't want to go full cartoon on it if that makes sense so it's kind of stuck between two poles at the moment and and i'm kind of interested to see where it goes all right yeah i, I want i'll be interested to hear what they do with sherlock holmes and if that adds some like i guess continuity and not just the you know Murderer, yeah. of the, murderer of the week. Uh, uh, we we didn't. Uh, I will say that we on, did but... not see Doctor Watson, um, and I think obviously a good Watson is also fairly important to the. I mean, I'm sure dynamic. he's also going to be another hot guy. Yeah, right? but I mean, like but... personality wise, like do you go for like stick in the mud Watson, dumb as a brick, or do you go for like a slightly more classical interpretation? We'll see. Anyway, like I'm I'm personally still enjoying the show enough to keep wanting to watch it, you know, but I'm certainly not as high on it as I was at the beginning. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see on that. And uh speaking of class warfare. <laughs> All right, Shell, why are you going to drop uh, this show? Yeah, let, let let's uh we'll Tell kick off more. Gel's anime trash power hour here by uh catching up with kuma 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 bear i think i put too many kumas in the show notes it's supposed to be three kumas uh <laughs> i'm probably I'm, i i haven't i i've pretty much dropped it i, I don't really want to watch it anymore after uh the the final arc i was watching i think it was like episode five or six five and six or something like that no good but, huh? um i just uh, like it wasn't super awful it was just like i i don't want to do this anymore um but basically what happened was in one of the episodes uh the main girl so her name is yuna the girl in the bear suit she starts obviously gaining some notoriety a because she's everyone's like there's a girl running around in a bear suit that's weird uh-huh. and she also has like near godlike powers <laughs> okay isekai got it she just she discovers that her power... She figures out that her power is basically imagination magic. Great, okay. So, like, it, for the most part, if she can imagine something properly, she can just, like... She, like, she just builds a house for herself. Like, she can just make things happen. So, um, she attracts a lot of attention, including the the guy who's, like, the lord of the realm. And uh, his daughter is a big fan, and, and so he invites her over, and... She's immediately distrustful of this guy because he's a noble and he's a, a part of the ruling class. Fair. And and she's like, yeah, you know, people in power are generally bad. And I'm like, all right, yeah, we're, we're let, let's go, let's do this, you know, down with the bourgeoisie and all that. Uh-huh, but uh, uh-huh. tell me more. So so she goes over to their house and like she's just like waiting for this guy to slip up, and and you know, of course he doesn't. He turns out to be a actually pretty fair and decent person and he has this just has this cute daughter that like wanted to meet the girl in the bear suit so she's like all right fine whatever so next episode she's kind of traveling uh she travels back to the town we saw in episode one for various reasons i'll I'll, i'm gonna skip a lot there's a lot of details in here i'm just skipping but she travels back and and she encounters this orphanage where they don't have any food or money or anything because the uh, the town government shut them off because they were they were not a profitable venture, so no more handouts. The orphans. Uh, oh man, yeah, those orphans don't... better pull themselves up by their bootstraps. Yeah, so 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 Yuna Yuna's just like super pissed. She's like, I knew it. This guy was, you know, this guy was bad news. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take him down. I'm gonna sh- teach them all a lesson. And again, skipping a lot of details here. As to why this happens, but just just roll with me here. Uh, <laughs> she um, she ends up setting up the orphanage so that they they can farm eggs, which destroys the local economy or something uh, like that. Uh... <laughs> while also giving, while also providing them with a steady source of in- sustainable income. And um, as her final sort of petty move on uh like i should point out in this particular town eggs are like a delicacy because they don't have chickens for some reason so like they're very valuable and um she refuses to sell it to the noble fam sell them to the noble family as like a petty uh gesture to but uh while also destroying their economy and so the lord guy's like you know 
basically shows up. He's like, hey, I know you. You know, why won't you sell us eggs? And she, she, you know, gives this whole big speech to, you know, call him out on how the, you know. This already seems way more trouble than it's worth. I, I'm, I'm just, oh, I, it's like I'm still on board with it at this point. I'm, I'm just setting the stage for for what's going to happen in the end of all this. Like at this point, I'm still on board. I'm like, all right, yeah, sure, this is great. And um, so you know, she she calls him out and gives this whole big speech about you know how could he do this to these people and everything. And he's like, oh, I swear it wasn't me or whatever. And um, yeah. So sure enough, he it goes back. Evil and vizier. And yes, it was the evil vizier all along who 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 was uh, embezzling money. He was embezzling money that the government had allocated for I these public joking. services. And it was this one guy that we've never seen before. He only appears in one scene to basically be the scapegoat, so that we can prove that this noble and just ruler guy is all fine and still an upstanding person. And he's just the one bad apple in the system that needed to be dealt with. And so he fires him, and they restore funding to the orphanage, and and the main girl is actually like gives this starts talking to her friend about how she's oh she's so embarrassed that she did all of this to this to this uh you know this guy who's actually a really good person and oh boy <laughs> completely undid any of the uh... messaging that was in there or or. I, I, I always wonder with fiction like this, like, that do the whole, like, oh, the people at the top were good and righteous, they just were unaware of the corruption and rot that they had, like, endeared and employed and Right, as if it wasn't their responsibility and, like, to be on top of right, that. Right, and it's like, whenever, anytime that they write, a story's written that way or portrays it that way, it's like... I feel like the intent of the author is like, ah, see, like, the nobles weren't so bad, whereas I'm like, isn't that actually a more, like, heinous indictment of the nobility and the ruling class if yeah. they are so ignorant that they just let stuff like that happen, like, under yeah. their watch? <laughs> I will say, it, the one thing I will defend the show on is... Um, they do still ultimately come to the conclusion that she did the right thing. Like they don't like say she shouldn't have spoken up against, you know, the, the system or whatever. Um, Cause you know, she, she gets the main girl says she gets like all embarrassed or whatever that she did that. But her friend is like, no, you know, you definitely did the right thing. You helped all these people that, you know, needed help and everything. So I, I saw some people writing about this sort of like in contrast to that other show, uh, wandering, Witch running this season mm -hmm. where the characters are kind of similar positions where they're extremely powerful, respected people kind of wandering the countryside. And, you know, when they encounter problems, because this isn't the first time that she's encountered a problem that she sticks her nose in and helps people. Like that's pretty much every episode. And, and she can't just sit there and watch, uh, you know, this bad stuff happening and not take action in some capacity. And a lot of people were kind of contrasting that with all the problems we were saying with Wandering Witch, where the main character doesn't do anything and just tries to, be, you know, stay out of it and be observant or whatever. So, I mean, I like that in theory. Just this particular arc was so exhausting, and I was very disappointed in how they just tossed all the messaging out the window in the end. That I was just like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Like it wasn't like I said, it wasn't like awful or bad, and maybe the rest of the show will be fun, but I was just like, I, I just I got plenty of other things to watch at this point, so I'm probably I think I'm done with that one. I, I've already haven't watched an episode or two. I'm already behind, so that was disappointing. <sighs> Alright. Now that I've gotten <laughs> that off my chest. That sounds like a lot. <laughs> Let's Let's move along. I don't really have a ton to say about Sleepy Princess and the Demon Castle. I just had, I, but I just when we last it. talked about it, I was on the fence of whether I was going to watch it, continue watching. I am still watching it. Uh, it has been pretty good, I will admit. Um, although there's still not really a whole lot to say about it, I guess they had two, two things I'll mention. Uh, they had one episode where all the uh, like the female demons came back to the castle because I guess they were all away for something or whatever. <laughs> sure. Which which gave them the opportunity to kind of mix up the status quo and introduce some new characters. Um, they had one like harpy girl who's like a human otaku, 
and by uh, that I mean she's like a monster who's very into human culture, um, which is weird for monsters. But uh, so she's like, oh, there's a real human girl here. I want to hang out with her and talk to her and everything. And uh, the princess is just like, huh, if I murder her, I could use her wings, the feathers from her wings for a nice pillow or something. So um, that was fun. Uh, <laughs> That's that, that's kind of the the level of humor. Right. I mean, that that sounds show. kind of like the humor you've described before, right? Of like um, this, uh... And they've also been, they've started to show the hero guy who is on his way to rescue the princess, but apparently he really sucks. <laughs> like sucks as a person, or just like sucks as a hero. Uh, he sucks at being a hero. Okay. He, he's very much like the classic, I will go save the princess and everything. Like, he doesn't seem like a bad person, but, like, he's just very bad at being a hero, apparently, because sure. he can't find the castle I mean, or that's the only way you get some humor out of this situation, right? Yeah, and so, like, the... So like the, so like the demons are like our job is to fight the hero. We got to help him. So he they are actually like trying to like actively guide him to where the castle is, <laughs> but it keeps getting uh, their plans keep getting ruined because the princess steals their like they're trying to like leave these artifacts and things to help him and like these different magical treasures and whatnot. And the, and the princess keeps stealing them to uh, turn into like a bed or whatever. So <laughs> that's kind of mixed in there as well. So again. There's not really a whole lot to say. It's just it's a fun, silly show. Sure, and I'm still watching it. I'm, I'm glad I did. I, it's it's just an enjoyable thing to watch every week. Um, more fun than Kuma 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 Bear. But uh, all right, let's uh, let's talk about Talentless Nana. Let's get back into some child murder. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Woohoo! So, um. Zig, Zig, did you catch up with this at all? Or I, you have, I have you, not. You plan on watching it? You know, I, I, okay. I'm watching enough stuff and writing enough stuff that I have not been I, able to catch up with it. I, I'm kind of trying to feel out how much I should spoil or whatever, but the when we last talked, we talked about the... We, we left off on the cliffhanger with the, the yes. necromancer girl yeah. that she was fighting. Um, I will say... The Necromancer Girl proves to be a pretty formidable opponent, which was nice. Um, and I will kind of tie in back to what we were talking about in Great Pretender and what I've said previously, where, again, the fact that Nana, like, has to figure things out on the fly, and it's not just, like, everything goes according to her plan, and, you know, she has to take calculated risks that she doesn't know is going to work for sure. I, I think um, it's a good contrast because obviously the first episode showed us that she is capable of running the long con and then so we get to see her at her best but also you know in subsequent sh episodes we've seen her on the defensive so we get a good idea of both what she's capable of but also the pressure that she's under which is a big difference from Great Pretender obviously. Right. And so, while you know, yes, of course she's going to get out in the end, because the show would end if she doesn't, um, <laughs> the, you know, she is actually in real danger and in a, a lot of the times, and it's like, okay, so how's she going to get out of this one? Whereas in Great Pretender, you know nobody's ever in any real danger in Great Pretender. But, um, but yeah, the one thing I will say is once the Necromancer arc came to an end... I, 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 the, the one this is probably the biggest thing I have not liked in the show so far is how that ended, because you kind of almost are rooting for the necromancer because Nana is not a good right. person. It, <laughs> She's like the villain of yeah, the show. It's always difficult when you have villainous protagonists because you and, you have to make them relatable and, regardless. Yeah, and um. So you're almost kind of rooting for the necromancer girl to beat her because she's actually a pretty formidable opponent. Who, she's like e she's been giving Nana more problems than even like the the main guy that was that's been her like who hasn't even been in this arc really at all. And at the I you know again I, I don't want to spoil details on this show because this is definitely a show that kind of gets ruined by spoilers. But they kind of at the end try to justify well maybe not justify but make you more sympathetic towards. Nana, or at least understand I, what why she's doing what she's doing, and they kind of flip over to make, painting the necromancer girl in a much more negative light out of nowhere. That feels like a common tactic in these kinds of shows where yeah, it's to, easier yeah, to just where, like 
portray the vill- the, the the antagonist of your protagonist villain as worse than the protagonist. <laughs> right. And they, they kind of try to do that, but whatever... <sighs> It just it does it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I, I'd prefer to like look. We all know Nana's a bad person. Let's just let's not <laughs> try to you know clean that up or change that or or make this other character look a lot I, worse than I, they've looked up to now with some plot points that came out of nowhere. I mean, the thing is though, kind of is thing. that as I just said, it's very hard to write bad people as your heroes you know and the the classic right. get out is you know to write them against even worse people i mean there's a reason why when you're playing as agent 47 the only people he knocks off are <laughs> like super bastards because you know it's right. the only way to make yourself enjoy what's happening and you know i think it's possible to write a bad person as your lead and still have like an interesting and exciting story but it takes a great deal more effort you know you have to operate at a much much higher level of narrative and that can be difficult obviously yeah and i think they've done a decent job with it up to now because they they do explain nana's motivation which is not really good but you can understand from her perspective why she might feel the way she does even though as the audience you don't agree with it but you know you can see because i mean she was you know, basically brainwashed as a child to do to do this, and there's maybe not maybe she does not know all the information about what's happening. So um, you can kind of understand that part of it. So in that way, I, again, I don't want to say sympathetic, but at least you can like understand her motivations and why she's doing. Yeah, what she's you can doing. you can make characters three dimensional without necessarily it, removing them it, from the bad side. Right of the to make it so that it's not like it's not like she's just evil for and she's doing this because she wants to murder people. Like she's not like just like a you know a serial killer. You know she thinks she's doing the right thing or whatever, and you can kind of understand that. But then to, to then go but then to like go to the point where you're going out of your way to make her victims look like bad people like out of nowhere when they weren't and just kind of pulling something out last minute uh, that, that was very clumsy on this particular arc but again like you said this this kind of thing's really hard to pull off um and i'm encouraged that they're trying you know, at least you know they're probably not going to get it get it right i, I would time, much but... rather that they try and fail than just you know not try at all i've always said that about you know everything that i like to read or watch or whatever you know so i again right. you know this is so i mean I, I would also much prefer that they try and yes, succeed course, but know, yes but <laughs> again you know this, this thing is operating on a level so far above what we were expecting that it's hard not to feel like it's kind of just a nice bonus if that makes sense like right because since our expectations were literally they've already zero, cleared the bars yes. right this is all just uh yeah, so I, I'm still enjoying it. Uh, I will be interested to see what you know next. Yeah. Where they go from here, as far as you know, I'll try and catch up before the next episode. I'm on there. You know, as far as like um, ramping up the difficulty, uh, so to speak, for her uh, her murder spree here. Like you know, each of each of the people she's taking out is getting like more and more difficult. Yeah. And I'd, it's going to be tough to top this one. So you we'll, know, we'll see. see. Maybe they'll have to move sideways into some sort of different circumstance. Yeah, maybe we'll get a fun side story where she can just easily <laughs> off somebody. I don't know. But <laughs> All right. Uh, let's catch up with Adachi and Shimamura, another show um, I th- that we, only we, you We may watching? not all agree on. We may not we may not agree on this one, but I actually really like this show. Um, it just has not been. It's not the type of show that there's really a lot. To I talk I think about. it's brilliant in bursts. Like I I think that it's occasionally very sweet and very charming and and you know even quite funny. I just don't think that the split is enough. You know I think it's like maybe eighty twenty boring crap to like inspired bits and and it's difficult for me to recommend it based on that sort of ratio. I, I think I don't agree with the ratio, but yes, in general, um, there is a lot of just, I don't know, but I, 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 I think, I think it's actually, I actually enjoy it a lot. Um, two things I will, I will say, 
uh, they did dial back the Dempa Ona girl. Yes, yeah, so though it looks like she'll she be back not... with a vengeance soon. Uh, I, I yeah, maybe, but at least for a couple episodes, she's basically been non a non entity. Uh, so that was good, and we've had more time to actually just focus on Adachi and Shimomura. Um, I'm finding now that we're about halfway through, I'm finding it interesting that like I was expecting this to turn into one of those shows where I'm just yelling, you know, just make out already on the, at the screen. And I don't <laughs> See, I am necessarily. <laughs> See, I don't necessarily feel that way, and I I know no matter what I think, that's kind of the direction they're headed, but. Uh, I, I feel like at least at the moment it's a very one-sided thing going on here. Like it's very it's very blatantly obvious that Adachi is madly head over heels, whatever, in love with uh, Shimomura. I mean, I, I I think Adachi is just generally a much more interesting character than Shimomura. Shimomura is kind of a bit perfect, if that makes sense. Like I know they tried to give her some some gristle with that weird episode in the sauna but anime right but yeah i mean i think she's whereas adachi's kind of more of the innocent puppy dog following her around shima more is supposed to be kind of the more like do i want to say jaded uh or maybe indifferent mature type of character maybe yeah well maybe I don't know if mature is even the right word because she doesn't really know what she wants versus whereas Adachi does. And um, so it doesn't necessarily feel like a two-sided... I don't feel like Shimomura has the same feelings that Adachi has. Let's put it that way, at least not the same But, like, there hasn't been any attempt to explore that, if that makes sense. Like, Adachi's plotline is kind of cliched and it's not anything we haven't seen before, but at least they're giving her agency and you know an internal monologue that we're we're in tune with and we know where she's going you know Shimomura is just kind of there and like I can't really but, define I mean, that, her as a character honestly I mean but that like her character is I mean it is supposed to be kids figuring things out here right right but, so, but they don't come across Shimomura doesn't know what she wants or what she likes or what's yeah i i just you know i kind of don't get that i think i think a real problem with the with the show is that like a lot of this kind of revolves around adachi being an oddball and you know a rebel who's skipping class and hasn't got good grades up until now but you know it's anime so she's beautiful and looks picture perfect (laughs) and Everybody is impeccably well behaved, and there's just not really the sense of her being an outcast or, you know, a, a black sheep in the way that the show seems to want us to believe. It just seems all very genteel. What do you? What do you mean, Zig? They told us that she was. Therefore, <laughs> we, 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 I, I we need to I pretend that if... she is the whole time. I don't know if they're pushing really that hard in that direction. I mean, it's. I mean, look. I mean. This is a very, uh-huh. um, it's that kind of show. Like it's it's not they're not going for any heavy drama or anything here. It's 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 a very um, slow, gentle type of show. And I mean, that's whether you like that or not is you know up to everybody's personal preference but that that is the type of show that it is and i think it's doing a good job of that type of show but yeah yeah no i i get where you're um, coming from you know but just just for me you know there's there's a sense of frustration about the whole thing yeah i mean it's it's not gonna ha- you know adachi's not gonna be in a you know a biker jacket smoking cigarettes in the bathroom here it's uh <laughs> It's it's not that kind of show. So, but what if um, she was? What if she was doing that? Then it would be a it different would be a show. much better um, show. I <laughs> I disagree. It would be different. But <laughs> we, we we could we could, we could sit here saying no, you're wrong all day. <laughs> yes, but, yes. Uh, point point is, I, I I you know I'm enjoying it, and I you know I'm still watching it. I think it's good. It's just the 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 episode to episode stuff. Like I mean, they do the Christmas and Valentine's episode basically as last 
couple episodes. Like, it's not really a whole lot else to dive in there on it, but... All right. Well, uh, let's, speaking of uh, characters who do wear biker jackets... Yeah, let's get to our <laughs> weekly gushing over Akudama drive. Yo, Sounds holy good. shit, man. Dude, oh, I think these last that... two episodes, like... Just, I don't know, to me, like... I said this last time as well of, like, a perfect encapsulation of, like, what makes this show work so well. But I feel like these last two episodes have also been a perfect encapsulation of what makes this <laughs> show work so well. I, I think what's been most impressive to me is how the show has kind of slightly shifted towards genuine drama and has done so fairly effectively and, you yeah. know, in keeping with its style. Like, I don't necessarily think, right. you know, a, a story of genetically modified super children is the most you know the most original thing in the world but sure. i think that you know they're using their strengths which is you know great audio visual presentation and a certain kind of weird creepiness like with the bunny and shark shorts and stuff like that you know and they've used it to kind of make the stakes feel tangible and everything you know they've dialed the seriousness up a notch without losing the crazy energy Sure, okay, but also, let's talk about that brawler executioner fight, right? <laughs> so, like, y'all y'all have heard me say this time and time again about, like, in a lot of ways, in, you know, in a lot of ways, anime is a little bit like pro wrestling in the sense that it doesn't actually matter who wins or loses. What matters is, was the fight actually good? Was the booking good, so to speak? Like... If a character has to lose, if a character needs to exit from the stage, ideally you make them go out on as high of a note as possible, right? So that like So you think he's actually were... dead? Brawler? Yeah. Yeah, I I I, I feel, mm, that feels the I would the way that I would framed... bet considerable money against that. So you don't think the executioner's dead either then? Uh or... I think he's more likely to be dead than Brawler. Uh, I think hmm. I think there's a f- maybe like a thirty percent chance Brawler comes back as Mecha Brawler. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna honestly that was my take was like there's like a I'd say there's like a a, a, a one in four chance that he comes back like I don't I don't think it's a hundred percent he's dead or like it's probably like slightly higher odds that he's right, dead. Right, they but... like cut out his brain and put a computer in there or something. But like I, uh, I don't know. I think the way I'll, I'll give you my theory after we talk about sure. the, the twist in. Uh... The last yeah, episode, fair enough. But, the, yeah. the twist and like the stuff they've introduced do le- lend some credence to like, well, you know, I bet I, I do bet this is a universe in which you could legitimately bring someone back from the dead. But you know, I think even if he's not dead, like the way they framed that episode, like it's such a good like send off to both of those characters. Like you know, again. Executioner Brawler, not exactly the most, like, deeply written characters you've ever seen in an anime, but you make, the show just does such a good job of making sure, like, hey, if these characters are done, if we're never seeing these guys ever again, the last memory you'll have of them is, like, the best one possible. Like, the staging of their fight, right? The constant, like, the, the weird, like, rolling fight they have across different environments, right? From, like, Ferris wheels to abandoned train, like, bridges and stuff. It's, it's, you know, the rain, the lightning, the it's all, like, so just... That show just has such a style to it. And I mean, it's, it's it a really great embraces... example of, of how, the, how, you know, anime is a visual medium and you can do your, vi- your storytelling almost purely through visuals, you know. Right, like, this is one of those... Like, again, right, it's, it's, it's you know, like, look, Brawler and Execution, there's, like, rivalry is not really that deep, right? It's basically just... It, it basically just boils down to, you know, you're not so different, you and I, you know? We live for the killing, right? We live <laughs> love the violence, don't you? You know, but it works. It works for those characters and what they are, right? Like, you know, we have seen these two dudes fighting back and forth, like, the last few episodes, right? We have seen Executioners single-handedly rip this fucking crew up time and time again, and it's it's really, really satisfying. You know, again, I think these characters are done for, right? I mean, I, I think that, you know, barring a flashback or, like, you know, Brawler's ghost smiling at the cast from the sky, like, I, I think these guys are done, I, and... 
so I think they did a really good job of like writing them out of the story. I, it, I will it, say that I, as good as the brawler executioner fight was, my favorite part of that conflict was the bit where Cutthroat gets involved to save Swindler and does so in like the most horrifying way you can possibly imagine. Oh yeah, and like... the way like the way they choose the shots to make it escalate. So first you think that totally. first you think that Cutthroat has saved Swindler. Then you realize that Cutthroat has saved Swindler by using a child as a human shield. And then you realize that he's done it by going <laughs> through the child is <laughs> right. You know, right. It, it's very effective, that, right? That, like... that sort of thing is shows up a lot in this show, I think. Cuz like also in the next episode when uh the 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 traitor happens they reveal it by throwing a knife, uh, throwing the... Right. It's Doctor and she throws a scalpel to cut uh, the sister's Right, but throat, because but... Up, up till then, your, right. your expectation is like, oh, a knife, it must be right. cutthroat. Right, for like half a second, you know it's cutthroat because they threw a knife. Yeah. And, right. and, and like, it's the kind, oh, it's not, It's yeah. the kind of misdirection which serves no greater purpose, but it's just a stylistic flourish which adds a right. degree a of uncertainty that, to the situation. And I think it actually got us really good, like, as Iro can attest, after the end of the Brawler episode, right? Because the end of the Brawler episode does end with, like, what I think is, like, a right. really really beautifully directed shot of of hoodlum standing by brawler's yes. body and picking up the executioner's like beam tonfo thing and then it just cuts to black right and it's like there's no like it's mm, it's right. beautiful mm, but like then, one of like, my favorite yeah. like scenes in anime in a while and so seen and, and then yeah. seeing her still alive makes you think maybe cutthroat's like, traitor or no uh or uh, hoodlum pff. hoodlum right, cause, yeah yeah cuz cuz we, we we were so obsessed with this theory that oh he's a secret because badass OP, Right or not? No, not even that. But like, and this, this again, this paranoia only exists because of the OP, which means you know the creators of the show did this on purpose, right? Of introducing four executioners in the OP, and so, you know, me and Eero got so wrapped up in this, like, oh fuck, like, like Hoodlum is the fourth executioner in disguise, right? He's deep cover or something, <laughs> you know? Like they have a similar build, right? Like this is like we got so wrapped up in that p- p- perfect misdirection. Like, did not even see the Doctor Betrayal coming. Like, so, like they got us so obsessed with, like, what's Hoodlum's deal? Like, what happened to the, the student at the end, right? Because she's still alive at the end of the episode, right? Like, did he spare her? Did he just maim her to maintain his cover? Like, and then, of course, yeah. we're talking about, like, oh, and I really, I really, Sorry, I yeah. really like that they didn't actually show what happened there. All right, we like, just go to afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, I, like... And, I, you know, I don't know if that's to maintain some form of mystery or, like, we just maybe didn't even need to see but it. But also I, I think it's a great style choice, but, you know, because because yeah, you've shown, I th- I think, you've shown I think, all this violence on screen. And so the only right, way, to, the only way fight, to top like, that is to not show right. the violence. And it, yeah. Right, like, like for as, as over-the-top and violent as the show is, but, like, I, like, the next episode, they're literally showing people's heads getting chopped off. Yeah. Um, the... Uh, you know, as as wild and as over top the show, as the show can be, they also know when to show restraint, which is awesome. Yeah, like I mean, it's a thing, right? Like I love, I love that brawler executioner fight, but like we don't even see the last punch. They know that we don't even need to see it, right? Like right. we've seen this guy throw Ferris wheels at each other. We've seen these guys, like oh man, that shot where like brawler like tosses down the fucking like Ferris wheel carriage and they just both get in it and start punching each other inside of it is so good. Yeah. But like. Because they've already shown us all these great scenes, we don't even need to see the conclusion of the fight. Like it's because it can't be topped. It, it, only our imagination can 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 really like top what they've shown us. And I right, mean, right. Uh, j- like, just to move away. Oh, w- sorry, once you got to the point where your brain can fill in the rest, you've yeah. done your job yeah, totally. as the you know and as um, the writer. Just, just to move away from like the action stuff for a moment, I also think the flashbacks to the to the laboratory are. Um, extremely well done and like maintain the show's very strong sense of style but in a completely totally. different way you know like they use kind of the the repeated visual motifs stuff like the pools of blood getting bigger and bigger and bigger until it's almost yeah. comical you know and they use the idea of just repeating this same bit of footage ad nauseum it's not a new idea it's been done before you know but i think it's effective and it shows how well they can change the gear into something that's a little bit more creepy and much yeah, lower no, speed it, it really is 
yeah, it, it really is done well. I I definitely do not want to like imply that the action is the only thing the show is doing well. Like, no, no, of course. I not. mean, that is definitely like the thing that I think got us all invested. But I think as the show has continued, like, I think we were all slowly beginning to realize, oh no, this show actually like can totally oh, get le- it done, even when they're oh, not so fighting. Also, I, I have like, to mention, legit. I have to mention it. Um. The twist that the moon doesn't exist anymore is <laughs> yeah, one of the all-time great anime It's, 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 it's a one-two punch of, no, we're it's, escaping to the moon, yeah. and then they say, no, you fools, you can't do that. Yeah, let's 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 talk about that episode. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's... I, I, did save the screen, <laughs> I did save the one screenshot of... Uh, Just out of context. Uh, out of oh. context, which was hilarious with the... Um, the uh, the lady who's the head of the executioners yelling ridiculous you can't go to the moon or yeah. something I'm like yep that's that's right. where we've but, escalated like, to the, at the this truly point. great thing is like the reasoning is like far more like over the top than like you might expect right because like normally you expect oh you'll never get to the moon we'll destroy this rocket no it's like no it's not that you're you'll never get to the moon it's at the very like your fundamental right. goal was invalidated before you even existed <laughs> like <laughs> right. Yeah. Like there was never a moon for you to go to. It's it's a uh, magnificent like I get like we bombed Kansai we talk- so hard that the moon broke. Right. And I think that's that's also beautiful world building, right? Cuz we don't need to see what happened. We just need we just have the implication that the Kanto Kansai war was so destructive somehow the moon was collateral damage. And right. I <laughs> again, letting your brain fill in the uh, rest. Is, uh... Yeah, and like again, we keep saying like, "Oh man, this show's so dumb." But also, in that last episode alone, I think everybody here was like probably thrown off at least two or three <laughs> times by things. Yeah, Maybe think... dumb, but uh, we're dumber apparently. Yeah, apparently so. Right? I mean, I th- like, I think I... the Doctor Twist is so effective because two things: one, she's definitely been one of the less visible of the Akudama up to this point, and two, she's mostly been used for comic relief, like having her head cut off and then somehow being yeah, fine. But, not, but I also, I think this also was super effective because, so, this is something I talked about with Iro before she's, the most recent episode came she's out. She's critical to the group survival. Right, she is the linchpin of the group's survival. So her being the traitor is actually the most damaging betrayal. Like, Right before before that episode, I had speculated with Iro. Oh, we're gonna like lose an Akudama per episode now, right? Like now that Brawler's out, now that like Hacker for now has left the scene, he'll come back, of course. Like we're gonna just be like one way or another losing an Akudama like per episode, and who better to go next than Doctor? Because she like execution I mean, would have killed probably these- a. F- We've probably lost uh, Cutthroat at this point, too. But. Yeah, yeah, especially if Doctor's not going to heal him up again, right? Like, Right. Like, well, we'll we're... see. There's a lot of possibilities still out there. True, that is true. But I, I do like that, like, oh, yeah, like, you realize, like, you know, the Executioner doesn't need to, like, make excuses or be a sort of loser. He would have legitimately killed these Akudama, like, three times over if not right. for Doctor. So, and now, right. so having now, heard... now when Cutthroat gets his legs chopped off again... Who's going to put him back on? It ain't going to be doctors. So. <laughs> well, that's that's um I that kind of comes to my theory on it cuz yes, I was going to mention we've been losing in Akadama pretty much per episode the past couple of episodes and they've kind of been whittling the group down to where we're we're basically just let's just down to Swindler, uh, well, Hoodlum too, but yeah, I don't Courier's know. Courier's there. I, don't know. I mean, he's still hanging Oh, out. yeah, Cur- and Courier, right. I know he's not doing much, but he is but, there. But, I mean, but Swindler's in the, it ends with her in the ship with the yeah, kids, right? Yeah, Well, So, that, that's like the final, uh, that, that's ultimately what they're getting at. Yeah. Um, and I'm wondering, is this just bringing everybody down to the lowest point and then we're going to have everybody re- in one glorious re- reunion at the end somehow. I mean, um, I also think you know, is is cuz cuz they do te- they do explain doctor's motivation doctor's motivation is not that she was like an enforcer, but she was basically just trying to get off the hook. Right, I mean, she wanted she gets, amnesty. It's right. And so she gets screwed over, which I'm like 99% certain she, she will. will. Yeah, let's be real. She's going to is she just going to flip back and get the group back together and we're back in action to take down the, the you know the enforcers. Maybe, yeah. Um, I, I think that, it does that's... depend on what happens next, right? Because if Doctor's betrayal gets multiple people killed, I don't know necessarily how forgiving the rest of the group is going to be, but you know, it's maybe her make good I... is she saves Cutthroat, right? Like maybe when the, the executioners inevitably be like, you know, to t- decide to clo- you know, tie up loose ends, her mate good is actually no. See, I saved all the people who were dying, so 
please forgive yeah, me, basically. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you guys have said it wouldn't be out of the possibility of bringing dead people like Brawler back. I mean, I, doctors literally brought herself back from the dead right. several times at this point. So, <laughs> you know, you know, our, you know, he could show up and be like, "How are you still alive?" And you know, it was a flesh wound. They'll, Right, they'll just they'll they can just they've already hand waved those things before. So right. let's they, I I you know that's I, that's why I think that's always still on. The I, I mean, it's but, definitely possible, but sorry, go ahead. I mean, because if they if they don't go that route, and we still have what like half a show, we still have left. quite a few many episodes yeah. left. <laughs> like I don't want to go five episodes of just Swindler and the kids. Neither um, do I, and I don't I think, think that this will show happen. Done yeah, so I I feel like because I mean we we at least know hackers still out there, right? Maybe yeah. he comes back as like the start of rebuilding the group, right? And but I I, I think there will be somehow everybody gets back together for one. I mean, last, the, the uh, thing I was going to say was that um, I think that that's a distinct possibility. I also think that like there's the distinct possibility that the show might end on a bittersweet or like a straight out bad ending. And I think I'm much more confident in its ability to pull that off after seeing what they have. I mean, everybody might still be, everyone might still die in the last episode, but I think before that happens... Yeah, of course, you know, there will be a glorious loss. They'll get the gang back together for one... This is one of those situations where I almost wish, like, that that one of us was a Danganronpa fan. Like, I don't want to be that person, but, like, I wish (laughs) one of us was, just to inform, like, the sensibilities of this writer. I have have gone through Danganronpa 1 prior to Akinama Drive, so... Okay, like, is... Does... Is that that a game that, like... Because my understanding is that game was always pretty, like, upfront about, hey, we're just going to kill people, and they're not going to come back, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I kind of would prefer that. Like, look, look, Brawler, Brawler was my favorite of the crew, like, like without the, a doubt. By the end of Danganronpa, but, like, two, like two thirds of the cast has been killed. Right. So, like, my susp- again, you know, not to judge a work by the creator's past works, but I kind of hope it veers closer to that direction. Not, not in a, like a mean spirited, grim way, but like, you know, in the way that, like, hey, the stakes are real. Like, people. Like people's lives are on the line. I kind of prefer that. Pre- prefer that to, you know, as fun as it would be to do a loop on like the third style, get the whole crew back together. I think the show works better if the stakes feel legitimate. I just feel like the way they've been presenting the loss of each character as a way of kind of showing how valuable they were is kind of building you up for them all coming back together i mean alternatively this is how the show is going to make the less useful members of the crew shine right like when suddenly you're down to fucking swindler and hoodlum right it's like you're gonna have to start finding ways to justify like making them shine as characters like making them take the the the, the stage yeah i mean and you can you can do that because i mean we again got a lot of time left true true (laughs) You know, I, I you know we they can whittle them down. You know, maybe for another episode or two before you know maybe we have to start building the team back up again. And I, I th- and again, this is all my speculation. I just feel like that's what we've been. Set I for. think that one other thing that's interesting is how far they are going to go towards resolving the weird Kanto Kansai kind of you know societal hierarchy slash oh, I love religious <laughs> angle they've got going there. Like because, you know, if that like is this ultimately going to tear down the walls there and reveal like this this kind of weird society that you know has genetically engineered super children to try and be immortal and like are they going to, you know, is this incident going to spiral out of control and destroy that balance? And uh, I'll be interested to see how big the scope of the story gets, because I think it could work either way. I'm interested to see which one they choose. Yeah. All right. Well, that show's good. That show's good. Who would have thought this show of all shows would be the one we'd be like, <laughs> this right. is our, intensely this is our... discussing the lore of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is our big surprise show, for sure. I mean, yeah. All right. All right. Yep. Well, speaking crack, of shows, oh, crack uh, my knuckles and yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about with uh, more. Magatsu Varheit, uh, whatever. So I don't know. Um, 
Ira, you want to I'm personally this I've been writing posts on this show. Uh, yeah, I'm personally falling out of love with this thing. Yeah, hard, I mean, but, yes. uh, but I've written half been... of the po- I've I've written posts for half of the show. I'm gonna keep going. Yeah. Um, so, Ira, what do you think of the latest developments uh, going on? Uh, they in the are last couple they are depressingly conventional. Let's say. Yep. Uh, I think the 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 part of the show that interested me to begin with was the sort of more urban, industrialized fantasy world and the plot around smuggling guns and stuff. Uh, and now that the plot is becoming magic monsters and human experiments and cold cold fire and stuff what if mk ultra but with werewolves (laughs) i'm like i'm less interested uh i think um one of one of the things that we've just talked about with akudama is how superior presentation makes the story of that show much more palatable and i think this is kind Mm -hmm. of the opposite i think there's still a potentially interesting story here and even, you know, if it's cliched, I don't necessarily think that's the death now, but I think right. the presentation has been underwhelming and, you know... Th- oh, dude, it's bad this yeah, that, week. Like, like, yeah, the last episode yeah, looked like I mean, that, like, there's, like, there's, a line, the fucking, there's a line between... That fight, quote-unquote, like, oh. That, that was on the level of, like, Yatterman Night <laughs> Finale. Right, uh, oh, I mean, there's a line between low-key and just sort of low effort, and they've they've kind of drifted past it at this point, you know, and, and I yeah. think... You know, at, I don't think it's the show's main problem. But I, it's not I think helping. you know if they uh, put a bit more verve into the material, I think that that would help. At least, I mean, I'm not saying it needs to go all out balls to the wall, you know, but it does kind of feel like they're going through the motions a bit at this point. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I, I definitely echo Eero's sentiment that like all the things we liked about this show are being like more and more pushed to the sidelines as like. Again, how much of this is now that we know what the game is, but, like, how, like the plot of Magatsu, the anime, is becoming increase- it, it is becoming increasingly more apparent how this anime leads into the game. And that's, right. like, just way less interesting, I think. And like, Yeah, and I, they, they weren't even really getting into too much into, you know... To me, like, the interesting things are the, the bits that Iroh said, kind of the more grounded, you know, you know, gun smuggling, whatever uh-huh. stuff that was going on in the beginning. And also the, the, the dual protagonist thing. They don't even really do much with that. Oh, that has, gone, that has gone absolutely nowhere. I'm right. Like, there, there, is no, there is no possible way you can, like, make the reasonable argument that Leo is a protagonist in this show. Like, he... He is incidental, right. like he is a side character. But I, but I think he's I think he's supposed to be. I, like <laughs> I agree, they're not. Yes, they're but not. Then, then they have fundamentally failed to portray him as one because like right. Leo's entire contribution to this plot is just being the one cop who sort of hems and haws about police brutality and torture, but right. like doesn't actually do anything right. meaningful to oppose it. Yeah, I want like, some more right, like I, the Empire, like I, but I already know that's not going to happen. Like I wrote I played the, the game, post so. like the most Leo has done. At risk to himself is like tell his boss, uh, "Hey, can I be there hey, when you torture should, uh... her, so that maybe you don't torture her that hard?" And then, meanwhile, Inumile is like literally running interference for the cops or stabbing right, like, monsters. <laughs> right, like like they keep trying to lean to this, like, "Oh, Leo's the hero, and Inumile's just like the hapless coward who got caught up in all this." And it's like, yeah, but, all, but fucking Inumile's the one who's getting shit done, like. <laughs> Yeah, he's the one. He's the one actually like, out like, there. He is a he is a way more active protagonist. Like Leo is entirely reactive. Like right, he yeah. doesn't do anything in this show like to his own end. It's all just following orders. Like even if you want to make the well, argument that Inumail is only here because he's getting swept up in like a bad situation, he could duck and hide. Like he really could. Well, no, they. Like, I I think. In the the last couple of episodes, they very explicitly show him making the decision right. to get involved. Yeah, like and even even though he's still claiming he's not part of the group or whatever, he's in it. it like, he he chose yeah. to help in the, in this latest like, operation. They they did not ask him. Yeah, to do like that. like he's doing more than the bare minimum they would expect of him, right? Like he's right. volunteering for the mission, even if you know he's being asked by another character. You know, he's doing stuff to actually aid them to help them, right? I mean, he goes to go and you know, he goes to find um. Uh, uh, ben and Arnold, right? Like right. he didn't have to do that. Like he chose to, and 
in a lot of ways, that's, you know, as cliche as it is, that's the true sign of a hero, right? <laughs> like, you know, is doing the right. right thing even when it's not asked of you. And, again, yeah. that makes him a way more interesting it's character. So like... to know eventually he becomes, like, the edgy, like, right. you know, anti-villain, anti-hero, whatever of, of the game is just, like... It's just, like, I don't yeah. know what the show wants me to think because the supposed criminals are clearly shown to be nicer yeah. than the Empire. I think... And again, I, I think I said this last time, but yeah. the insights, having yeah. played the game and knowing that they're they're gonna talk a big game here and not go anywhere is right. what's really killing it for me. Like they're bringing up a lot of these big topics, like you know, the, you know, in the beginning I thought it was like you know we're fighting the evil empire or whatever, but I already know that's not going anywhere. Um, you know, uh, and they're just, they're they're bringing these things up, but they're not going to actually say anything. I don't right. feel like, and it's just I feel. Yeah. Like I mean, it's it's part of the just... problem with every prequel, right? You're moving towards a fixed point, and that takes away a great deal of the drama, quite frankly. Yeah. Yeah, I th- I think it's also even like, even if you're moving to a fixed point, I think they're like there are ways to like make that that interesting, like. Mm-hmm. Magatsu feels like the show that, like, on a whiteboard somewhere in the pre-production of this show, they wrote down, portray Headkeeper and the Empire as, like, you know, not necessarily both sides are equal, but, like, we're going to try to give an even-handed portrayal of both sides, right? Like, Right, like, there's good and bad on both sides, and that then kind of thing, right? that whiteboard got immediately ignored once the show went into production. Like, because... Again, like, there, as you know, it's like as everyone's saying, like, there's nothing, there's, there, there's nothing redeeming about the empire. Like, you can't even, you can't even do the like, ah, there are good people here working within a flawed system because there aren't any good people. Right. Like, you can't. I refuse. The only to, good people like, in the empire show and have been the ones helping Headkeeper. Right. Like Leo, I, 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 like at this point, I've accepted. I can't actually call Leo a good person as in his current, in, you know, incarnation in this show. I don't know. Maybe in the game, he's like, man, I feel really bad about all those like war crimes I committed. But like right now, like, I don't give a fuck if he feels guilty or he feels bad about committing police brutality. He's still doing it. Like, he is. Right. He he isn't a good person, even if he feels bad about it. Like. <laughs> It, like, well, I mean, part of the yeah. problem is also that we simply haven't seen a great deal of him. Like, right. he tends to he tends to pop up just enough to remind you that this guy is here and he's nominally a main character, but you know, it's mostly just been him doing soldier things, and it's it's you know, there's no depth to his actions, you know, and there's no sort of through thread running. Whereas with him, at, uh, how do you pronounce it? Um, in your, in your mail, mail. mail like yeah. you know you can at least see the beginnings of a character arc you know an evolution of the character but you know leocardio is just so so much a second thought that you know he's just sort of there he's wallpaper paste so really the only question i have at this point is are they going to do the time skip in the anime or not I could say I don't it know happened gonna, in like last episode. Last episode, yeah, like penultimate episode is the epilogue, thi- the, yeah. the the Kool Aid bomb that goes off and destroys the city, and then the epilogue is like, you know, where you go from there. Basically, everyone's married. They have kids. Kids have the kids. They did. Um, is hella dead. <laughs> they did. They did introduce the Faust in the the last yeah, episode. I, who he is one of the dudes where I went. That guy's probably in the game. Yeah, so I don't I don't know if he'll actually be important in the anime, but he's basically your boss in Who the game. Who are we talking about? The the the, the lab uh, coat man with the glasses. Yeah, there's like oh, yeah, he's hair. A, there's like one. Wait, yeah, there's your, one. He's he's your boss in the game. Yeah, he's basically your boss Isn't in the he, game. He's but he's like obviously super evil. Um. <laughs> uh, no, well, no, he's so. He's not the guy that sets the. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I, I thought you meant the guy later. who frees yeah. all the monsters. Oh, yeah. my bad. Uh, yeah, he he's just some guy that Leo meets in the street and. Uh, and oh, that's like. Oh, that yeah. This dude. is like my neighbor or whoever. Okay. Okay. So. Um, okay. Got it. Got it. So I don't know if he's ever even going to show up in the anime again, but they did. That might just be a like kinda, you know. That might just been a shout out to the game. Yeah. I don't know, but if he does show up again, 
just for context, he's the very first person you see in the game, and he's basically your boss. Oh, okay. He, like, runs the PSC. I generally do it. not trust writers who name their characters Faust. Just saying. <laughs> well, yeah, what about Guilty what do you have it's a little on Guilty Gear? Gear. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little on the... <laughs> it's a little on the nose. I would not let's describe say, the writing what in Guilty in Gear as particularly high quality. <laughs> put it that way. Well, you don't love that, like Soul Bad Guy and Kai Kisuke are now technically in laws. Like <laughs> you, you uh, obviously know way more about. I love the that Guilty we can Gear casually. We can casually. You don't just like say... that Chips enough is the president of the United States. No, Sorry, that bit's what? good. Uh, it, it, yeah, that would probably be an improvement. But um... <laughs> honestly, Guilty Gear writing when they just de- Guilty Gear writing peaked when they decided to call a guy Chips enough. Like that's it. How yeah. can you get better than that? <laughs> you can't. You really can't. I mean, we we're saying like the, we're saying with a straight face the fact that there's a man named Soul Bad Guy. Um, anyway, but anyway, um, nope. yeah, I'm I, I that's like I said that's pretty much my only thing I'm looking forward to at this point is seeing if they do the time skip or yeah. not. But I, I'm my hopes. Yeah. My hopes have been dashed yeah, on this one. I think at this point, I don't think any of us are expecting the show to be good yeah. by the end. I think we just, you know, we just all kind of want to see it. how it ends yeah. at this point. Yeah. Uh, and, we you will know, forever chasing the, the shadow of Rage of Bahama Genesis. Yeah. Yes. They wait. Also, I, I just want to apologize. I took a shot at Yatterman Knight, but that show is really good. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Yatterman Knight's great. The last episode, however, is like they a total fixed nightmare it shit show. Blu-ray. I watched Not it. Not really. It's, they nominally it's, fixed it's, it for the Blu-ray. It's less I obviously think they, broken. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I guess they didn't loop as many uh, bad like, if, shots. If, 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 the, if the TV airing of Yetterman Night's last episode is a broken window, then the, 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 the Blu-ray version of Yetterman <laughs> Night's finale is like duct taped yeah. over. Like, like yeah. yeah, technically bugs and, you know, the bugs can't get in anymore, you know, but like... <laughs> It's not really fixed. I'll, I'll hold out for yeah. the big budget movie trilogy remake in a few years. There. <laughs> yeah, that that shows re- that show is really good though. So yeah. shout out to Yatterman shout out to Yatterman. Uh, also, you know, not a good one. show though. Um, you know, uh, just tangentially, any shout out to Yatterman Knight must also be accompanied by a shout out to Time Bucket and Twenty Four, which was extremely oh, yeah. good as well. Well, I will second but this. Yes. Speaking of shows that are perhaps not so good. Ooh. Oof, yeah, oof. so uh, I figured now might be a good time to do a quick uh, Common uh, Rider okay. update if you guys so, so bad. It, but, uh... Go ahead. It has improved greatly. It is now only completely terrible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was waiting for that. Right. So yeah. what I mean by that yeah. is that the last few episodes have at least been coherent. They proceed yes. from plot okay. point A to plot point B in an extremely dull fashion. But that's considerably awesome. better than, say, you know, episodes three, four, five, six, which were just kind of disasters. Right. Like, I'd like I'd say this was zero exaggeration that we were watching Come Rider Saber, and I like thought to myself, did I drink a lot of whiskey and don't remember drinking? <laughs> because <laughs> I am a completely unable to follow this show. Like is I, that's how I felt. I actually <laughs> felt like I drunk. Like, did you start to feel yourself like disassociate? Yes, absolutely. A little. Like, it's, like, like you could see your body from the outside. Like, I was the, like, "What am I doing?" The the show is basic. Like those episodes <laughs> were basic. Any any time a show makes you ask, "What are you doing with your life?" is a bad. Uh... But that's that's the thing. You know, it's not merely that the writing was bad. You know, common writer right, shows right. have been bad. They will be bad again. You know, it happens. But, you know, just, you know, it's almost like, you know, the whole blindfold a man and then have him throw darts with story ideas (laughs) on them. You know, it just like absolute incompetence on every level. The writing is awful. The acting is bad. These like the the visual design of the show is disgusting. You know, the power ups are lame. The fights are awful. You know, like all the things that. Like, it fails on so many levels, it's barely believable. And I will say that the last few episodes have been better than that. 
Yeah, they brought in the good director. Yeah, they brought in Koichi Sakamoto, who's a long-time Toku director. We're big fans of his. You can always tell when he's on a project because mm-hmm. very large explosions start happening a lot. But um, Which is like the one he's known for? Forza. Like... Uh, okay, Come got it. Yeah, he also okay. directed Pogo Lane. He also directed Kyoryuja, which I covered way back in the early days of the blog. And he was he was uh, the, the stunt coordinator on Power Rangers for a good deal of the you know two thousands. Um, so, I mean, I, I ask because I'm curious, but I'll probably forget by the next time you bring I mean, up his yes. name. So. Yeah, but like, suffice <laughs> to say, like he is a good director. He has a very distinctive sure. visual style. You can take it or leave it, but it's better than like just the mush of horrible shit but it sounds before. like he's working with such bad yeah, source absolutely. material here that like he can you only know, do so put it much, this way right? like, yeah. like in nine episodes they introduced seven separate riders um each Ooh, of whom of has riders. like a bunch of power-ups all of the power-ups are terrible like all of the yep. characters are terrible and I mean, don't they all just have swords? Yeah, I was just they all have like swords. Like bigger sword. Power <laughs> you see, the 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 their belts all have three segments on them, and so there's a, there's a left, a center, and a right, and so oh, you can mix and match uh-huh, them. Uh-huh, except they all, all except right, they, hey, except I, they I all suck. Uh, <laughs> is it just bit sword or yeah, bigger I, sword? I mean, like it's, it's, like it's kind of hard yeah. to offer any sort of meaningful critique of the show yeah. because it's just so bad. I have a meaningful critique. It's supposed to be like a book fairy tale themed, and half of the power ups just aren't books or fairy tales. I mean, like, what about the fairy tale about the hedgehog? Right, like, okay, it's like, sure, Jack the Beanstalk, okay, Peter Pan, okay, like, Lamp and Alan, Aladdin, I'm like, okay, fine. And then this power up is Needle Hedgehog that lets me shoot needles. And I'm like, what story is this? I've never hmm. heard of this. Or just like, Soaring Pegasus. And. I, f- I fly. It's like n- no. What what is the plot? What like which well known fairy tales? I mean, they also gave two flying power ups to the water themed rider, which is like a hilarious <laughs> like indictment on how shit? little they care. Right, he gets Peter. He's Peter Pan, Soren Pegasus, yeah. but he's the water guy. The wind uh, guy doesn't have these. Yeah, it's he's a ninja. <laughs> like what is look, what is the design like, of this shit? Look. Kamen Rider shows are, by their very nature, extremely formulaic, and I don't think anybody yes. would argue that the best parts of a Kamen Rider show are the first dozen or so episodes. You know, <laughs> they can be good, but generally you get the pay dirt at the end, you know. But, like, this past episode has literally been the first time that we actually have any sort of concept about what they're fighting about. Like, the bad guys simply seem to have right. no motivation, they're generically evil. But we don't know why. And Right. And right. like the heroes are stopping them from Doing some something. Like I, Sounds bad. <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> I I just want to point out because I did a Google search for uh oh God. folk tales about hedgehogs and oh. there is in fact a wikipedia page uh labeled hedgehogs in culture <laughs> that lists off uh the appearances of the hedgehog in popular folklore um okay where, where how does seems Sonic like uh turn into... seems like uh there's a lot of like hedgehogs showing up in like balkan folklore slavic sure, folklore uh, sure. where the hedgehog is presented as a a, a wise and a hard-working, no-nonsense creature. Um, <laughs> Do they like chili dogs? Uh, nothing about chili dogs here, no. Just um, Does the phrase, let's do it, no, to more... it appear in any of these <sighs> folk tales? No, mostly just the hedgehog sleeping in and being late to a wedding. Nice, um, okay. That's what I do, yeah. <laughs> Put it this way, I would enjoy seeing a Carmen Rider being late to a wedding much more than the stuff we have seen on screen here. You know, I mean, like, uh, all, right. <laughs> all I will say this page, is... This page does show a Brothers uh, Grimm story like, all, you, about a hedgehog. Like, all I will say is that, like, I've watched way worse shows on this blog just because they had truly reprehensible subject matter, but I don't think mm. I've ever seen a show that was this just incompetent at putting together a piece of entertainment you know it's it's so and look i'm sure they've had production difficulties with the the covid and everything you know but that only you know 
it only but you can't yeah, blame like, the bad and, rating on that and you know you can blame some of that on it like for a while the bad guys were not allowed to be in their hq they were green screened in which worked about as well as you'd expect um right but uh, but i mean you can you can live with something like that if the the you know the yeah, writing exactly. and the plot that's the and thing the key good, right? part like, of toku is that if it's good you don't mind that it looks rubbish because that you know you're you're surfing off of the characters and you buy in you know the suspension of disbelief is right. there but there's such a fundamental failure on every single aspect of the production that you can't even enjoy this ironically it's just kind of torturous great and on that note i uh, um... want to i want to correct myself before the folklore heads get to me uh the hedgehog was late to the wedding um the son assumed that the hedgehog was late to the wedding because it slept in, but actually what the hedgehog was doing was uh, trying to teach itself how to eat rocks. Oh, sweet. Just like a goat. I, I, I love weird old folklore. Hey, folklore is great. Goats eat rocks. Why can't a hedgehog eat rocks? I mean, I, I will say <laughs> that eating rocks is a fairly apt comparison for Kamen Rider Saber. <laughs> <laughs> there there we go. Go. Put that on Bana, the back of the box. Bana, 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 bana. <laughs> All right. The box. <laughs> well, if you want more more of that, read I'm still books. writing about that show every week. It's my penance. You're still <laughs> torturing yourself with that, so um, you can go check that out. And I think that'll do it for this episode. So let's do our housekeeping. You can check us out at theglorioblog.com where you can read those posts. Follow us on Twitter at theglorioblog. You can... Uh, Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Amazon Music, Podbean, and I believe now Stitcher. I don't know, haven't confirmed if that went through. Just use an RSS um, feed like a cultured gentleman or lady. Well, yes, there's also a link to the RSS feed in the post. Okay. They're all ultimately tied to the RSS feed. And, of course, we also post on YouTube, so go like, comment, subscribe there. And, uh, you know, tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Recommend Carmen Rider Saber we'll... to your enemies. <laughs> hey, if they're reading the posts, it counts all the same. That's so. Uh, and that that'll do it. We'll catch everybody next time. Could